Hi, I'm Joe Pior with Blue Marble Consulting. And today I'd like to show you SAP projects and portfolio management for capital projects. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the SAP strategy management solution. So as you can see, we can do a number of things here. Uh, here from the home tab, we can take a look at our dashboards and KPIs. So here we have an asset performance dashboard and for each KPI, we can drill into relevant details and see a variety of metrics. We can also, from our strategy tab, take a look at our strategy map. So we can see every item that makes up our strategy and click on any item to see the KPIs that make up that item uh, or indicate uh, the success of that objective as well as the status of those KPIs. So we can see here, uh, we have a color code status. So red means not so good. Green means that the KPI is um, performing well and yellow is somewhere in the middle. We can also take a look at the uh, strategy pathways here. So we also have individual items here. So we can take a look at the strength and financial stability pathway and see we have two objectives that comprise that. And we can see both those are green, meaning the objectives are doing well. We also have a scorecard tab here in the strategy management solution. We can see here uh, an overall list of all of our objectives, and then we can drill into any of these objectives and look at the details and see how we're doing in terms of performance for each of these objectives. Let's scroll down here and get some more um, information as well. Now we're gonna take a look at portfolio management. So the overall structure of portfolio is reflected in a hierarchy of buckets, which allow you to flexibly categorize projects. Uh, you can uh, break these buckets up into any level of detail, meaning each bucket can have several sub buckets. Uh, within the buckets, we have items and initiatives, and each bucket can have its own planning timelines and field services, such as questionnaires or scoring models which are defined in the bucket details. So here we can take a look at the bucket structure. We can expand uh, any of these buckets and see um, what comprises them. But we can also take a look at a visual view using the portfolio structure graphic and see the bucket hierarchy uh, in this view as well. We can also take a look at classification hierarchies, and what they do is they provide an alternative view of the elements which you have in your portfolio. So you can break these elements down by a variety of structures. So here we have this energy generation alternate hierarchy where we actually have these buckets uh, for each region. We can, of course, expand the view um, for these or take a look at the graphical representation of the hierarchy as well. Next, we're gonna take a look at the initiative dashboard. So we can click here on portfolio initiatives. We can see a list of initiatives and key information and statuses for each uh, via this dashboard. And we can also create initiatives from this dashboard as well. So we're gonna click on create initiative. And the first thing we have to do is select a bucket for this initiative. So we're going to choose um, energy generation and then increase in production volume. And we're also going to assign an initiative type. The next thing we have to do is give this uh, initiative a name. And we can also assign our own ID number to this initiative as well. And what we can also do is click on the classification tab. And here we can assign a category for the initiative. So here we're going to choose the proper category. And we're going to save 
our new initiative. The next thing we're going to do is create a new proposal item. So portfolio items are somewhat generic in that they can be project or product proposals and or active projects. Item status and configuration of current status determine whether an item is a proposal or a project. And a proposal can also evolve into an active project. So we're going to take a look at our portfolio initiatives here. And we're going to select the one we just created and open that up. And what we're going to do now is click on the Assigned Items tab. And here we click Create. And here we have our bucket selected, and that's the correct one. But in this case, we also want to assign an item type. So we're going to choose Proposal Capital Project as our item type. So now we have to enter a name. as well as an item ID. And we're also going to maintain dates here. So we're going to select our plan start and our plan finish date. Let's choose today as our plan start date and let's choose eight months from today as our planned finish date. And now we can go ahead and save. So now we're going to open our item again. And what we can do here is, as you can see, we have um, a variety of items we can fill out here. But what we're interested in taking a look at are the questionnaires for this item. So to access these questionnaires, we go to the Additional Information tab. And first, we're going to click on our Probability of Technical Success questionnaire. And so here, we're feeling pretty good about our projects. We're going to select High for question one. We're going to select Yes for question two. And for question three, Yes as well. And we're going to also um, answer the remaining questions and click OK. We also have an assessed risk questionnaire. So we're going to answer these questions as well. And we don't think this project is uh, particularly risky. So we're going to uh, indicate that in our answers here. So now we've filled out both these questionnaires. And the next step is to enter our financial information. So here we're going to enter the launch cost and the development cost. So our launch cost is $1,000. Our development costs are $10,000, and we're also going to um, enter up here the net present value, which is going to be $800,000. So as you can see, the system is calculating based on these values, the expected commercial value and the next step is simply to save. So the next step is to add our proposal item to the review. 
What portfolio reviews do is provide evaluation abilities that can lead to go or no-go decisions for proposals to go to projects. So here we've clicked on a review item here and we can see um, we have several review names and we're going to select on increase production value. So here we can see our existing review and now we just click on the items tab and we click on add. And now we have a search box that comes up and we're going to enter the number we're looking for. And so here now we can see we have our um, item is created and we can go ahead and add that to our review. Now the item has been added to the review and we can simply save. We can also review the scoreboard um, for this review as well. So what scoreboards do is allow decision makers to compare items based on numerical indicators and selected scoring models. And so what we can do here is we can click on our scoreboard icon. We have a variety of scoring models set up here. So we're going to select the appropriate one. And now we can see here that each of these items has a score based on the numbers we entered um, and questionnaire items such as risk. So here we can see that our project here, or, or sorry, our, our item here, our proposal at this point, um, has a score of 100, so that would be a desirable proposal to follow up on. So now we're going to go back to our portfolio initiatives and take a look at financial planning. So we're going to select our initiative. And from here, we click on the financial and capacity planning icon and click financial planning. And as we can see here, we have several categories. We have actual costs, forecasted costs, plan costs, all these items. And we can see um, for each of these categories, uh, the numbers for this item. We can also do the same thing with um, capacity planning as well. So to see capacity planning, we just simply click on capacity planning and we can see values um, based on whatever unit we're looking at. So as you can see, no capacity planning has occurred um, for this particular item. The next thing we're going to do is convert our proposal item and create it into an active item. To do this, we simply select the item And we're going to click on the change process icon. So first of all, I have to specify an item type. And we're going to specify our version type as snapshot. So as we can see, our item type here has been changed to uh, capital project. So now we're going to go ahead and save this item. So now when we open up our item again, we can see that we now have the option to click the checkbox for create project on saving. So we go ahead, we uh, will go ahead and do that and then save the item. As you can see, the portfolio management solution allows you to effectively manage a large portfolio of projects as well as proposals and create projects from those proposals as well as evaluate the viability proposals um, based on a variety of metrics which can be uh, collected through questionnaires. You can also plan costs and capacity for each portfolio item uh, as well as 
um, take a look at any number of criteria for each item, uh, as well as the status, and uh, quickly and effectively manage a very large portfolio um, using a variety of views. Additionally, you can quickly switch um, from a portfolio item to an active item and then create a project from that item directly from portfolio management. And the project can then be managed in the project systems module. For about how this solution can benefit your company, please contact Sabrina Sigourney of Blue Marble Consulting. You can check out our website at simple-sap.com 